I attempted to collect every single dungeon exotic in the game in 24 hours. Now a thought that probably just came into your mind if you aren't familiar with our style of challenge videos is that this is just simply not possible. And honestly, you wouldn't be crazy to have that thought enter your mind. After all, dungeon exotics besides the weekly rotating dungeon are only allowed to be attempted three times per week. This is why so many people still don't have certain dungeon exotics like Heart Shadow for months or even years after the dungeons have released. This is also why when you get a dungeon exotic to drop, the feeling is just so special. So that brings us to the million dollar question. What if there was no cap to how many times you could try for each dungeon exotic in Destiny 2? Well, I know there'd be two major questions that you'd be curious of. The first would be, how many tries would it take you to get each exotic? And the second would be, could I collect every dungeon exotic within 24 hours? And that's how this challenge was born. For those of you that got the chance to watch me do this with the Raid Exotics, you're going to be familiar with how this works. Also, I'll be live at twitch.tv slash cbgray doing more challenges like these, so if you want to see these live, make sure to come check us out. If you enjoyed this style of challenges, make sure to hit the like button, and if you're new, go ahead and subscribe as we'd love to have you, and if this video hits 5,000 likes, we'll attempt this when the new Dungeon Exotic comes out next season. Also, I love and appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Now back to the million dollar question. How is this possible? Well, if you aren't familiar with my collecting all 222 obtainable exotics in one stream video or attempting to collect all of the raid exotics in 24 hours, I highly suggest you checking these videos out as we tackle a similar problem. So normal Destiny challenges are done on one account, but our challenges are not traditional challenges. They're Pokemon challenges. The name of the game is Catching Them All, and it doesn't matter if you need Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Silver, and Pokemon Crystal. All that matters is completing your Pokedex. And that's how this challenge is going to work too. We'll be using multiple accounts. So if I fail to get the dungeon exotics in my first account, then I can just try again on a new account. This is how we can get around the hurdle of only having limited attempts. A big question you might ask is what dungeon exotics are we including? Well, for this challenge, we're going to be including every dungeon exotic that's tied to an actual dungeon. One question that I got a lot was will I include mission exotics like Wicked Implement, Vex Calibur, or even Deadman's Tail now that Presage is back? Well, the answer to that question is no will only be focusing on actual dungeons, not missions. This means that there are six exotics to collect at the time of this recording that can be obtained through RNG or through quests. And for those of you that are wondering why there are only six exotics to collect when there's seven dungeons, keep in mind Prophecy doesn't have an exotic tied to it, and that's probably because when it initially launched it wasn't intended to be a permanent activity. With that out of the way, let's go over some ground rules. First, I can use as many accounts as I want, but they all have to be new accounts I just made. Second, I can farm dungeon checkpoints only after I've done a full run of a dungeon in order to get that checkpoint. And finally, no cheating, but that's a given. And now that we've covered our bases, let's start the 24 hour timer and get into the challenge. I start off with everyone's favorite thing in the game. The dungeon, I mean new light. Yeah, all roads seem to begin and end with New Light when we're doing these challenges. Anyways, New Light is Bungie's way of getting new players acquainted with the story in the world of Destiny. I'm now a full-fledged guardian and totally caught up with everything I need from the story. Also, who's this Kate guy? Rest in peace to him, I think? Maybe not since he's coming back in final shape? But will he actually be alive or uh... Let's move on. All jokes aside, New Light is unfortunately very important to this challenge because without doing it, we can't fly anywhere in the solar system. That means each time we do an attempt with a new account, we have to invest anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour to get three characters dungeonable. That's totally not a word, but you get what I'm saying. I did, however, learn some valuable lessons from attempting this with the Raid Exotic Challenge. Outside of the New Light experience taking forever, creating accounts, verifying things with emails, SMS verification, accepting all the cross-save pop-ups, and other things can eat up a ton of time. Because of this, I created six accounts before the challenge had even started and had each account already on the character creation screen steps so that I wouldn't have to waste additional time. Spoiler alert, I still ended up wasting a ton of time, but it might not be for the reason that you'd guess. You'll see in a bit. Back to New Light though, I ended up naming my guardian CB Grey Dungeon 1. And then the other five accounts, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, because I'm very creative. Anyways, I take the time to go through New Light, this time already knowing about Maeve's key. What's Maeve's key, you might ask? Well, it was something added to Season of the Deep to the New Light quest to help Guardians out early. If you use Maeve's key on Maeve's stash, you can get your hands on one of the best weapons in the game, the Tractor Cannon. If you watched the Crota Zen Raid Race, you know just how strong this weapon can be, so getting this early is huge. Also, with being a low power level, having a weapon that I can use to buff my teammates' DPS without being reliant on a New Light's DPS is game-changing for this challenge. Now that I've picked up the Tractor Cannon, I'm ready to set our sights on our first dungeon exotic. The Wish Ender. I make this decision because it's not reliant on RNG and it's a great exotic to use for the early games. This was an easy choice. I had already purchased the Forsaken Pack, Shadowkeep, and the 30th Anniversary with this account, so I also saved some time there from having to do this during the challenge. Before I head into Shattered Throne, I stop by the tower to pick up some more PvE exotics that will help me during the challenge. 
You may be wondering how. Well, the Forsaken pack gives you three Forsaken Ciphers so I can choose any Forsaken exotics from the kiosk that don't require spoils since obviously I don't have spoils yet. I decide on Izanagi's Burden, Jotun, and the Lemon Arc. Looking back, I probably should have substituted Jotun for Lumina. It's also important to note that despite me doing this on a Saturday, I decided not to even waste my time stopping by Xur until later in the challenge due to already knowing I didn't have enough legendary shards. Now that I had purchased these exotics, it was time to get into the dungeon. Before we go any further, these challenges require me to sit in this seat that you see here for potentially up to 24 hours, sweating my butt off trying to get all of these exotics before the clock strikes zero. Because of this, I want to make sure my hygiene is taken care of. This is why we're partnering with Geology and they made this exotic challenge possible. Some of you may be familiar with Geology already from when they brought us Raid Zone back with the Crotazen Raid. Well, together we're back again to make sure that we have all of your hygiene needs covered. The two biggest stereotypes for us Destiny players is one, we don't touch any grass, and two, we don't shower. Well, I got good news for you. We're here to change that. Geology is a 25-time award-winning personalized skincare company that creates simple and effective skincare and hair care routines customized just for you. How can they do that? Well, you take a 30-second quiz and they do the rest. You guys see me. I have a full head of hair. And because of that, I need a lot of products to take care of it. They have shampoos, conditioners, and my favorite product, the Smoothing Hair Co-Wash. They also have body washes, face washes, deodorants, and much, much more. Click on my link or scan the QR code on the screen for 70 percent yes i said 70 off of your personalized skincare trial set and get an additional 30 percent off of your skin hair and body add-on products when added to the trial another big thank you to geology for partnering with me now let's get back into the challenge i fly back to shattered throne only to immediately fly back to the tower why you might ask because apparently now instead of having to get all the way to borgith in order to start the quest you can now just pick up the first step in the tower quest kiosk called the hunter's remembrance this was the first major time save that we experienced during the challenge. Usually time saves come from me being prepared, but this was actually a pleasant surprise where a time save came from me not being prepared. I'm not complaining though. This new version of the quest started us off by going to visit Petra in the Dreaming City. After this, the Wish Ender quest proceeds as it normally does, only this time we only have to run Shattered Throne once instead of going into it twice. I dive into Shattered Throne and we go back and forth across the first initial area based on the symbols that spawn. After we're done, we spawn the first Minotaur and kill him with almost no effort. After that, we slam the first orb into the empty-handed statue. We move on to the next area that requires getting past the millions of snipers on both sides. Despite this being the first dungeon introduced, this still hurts a decent bit due to my low resilience in mods. And that's a good way to segue into why this challenge is so difficult. You may be wondering if I'm just some type of weirdo that intentionally is making this harder than normal just because I like pain. Well, I think by doing challenges like these, it must mean that I like pain. Ting the full picture for you guys. You see, in Destiny 2 post Lightfall, a system called Guardian Ranks was introduced. Its original purpose was to guide the new player and teach them about different facets of the game in somewhat of a linear fashion. It's also the arch nemesis and the biggest blocker of this challenge. If this isn't your first video of mine, you already know what I'm gonna say here. You'd think that a new player would be introduced to mods quite early as they're super useful to survivability and uh, everything else in the game, but I'm here to tell you that thinking this is flawed and shame on us for thinking that. You can't use mods until Guardian Rank 6. That goes for armor mods and weapon mods, meaning that things like resilience is out of the window. It's just not worth the time to commit to Guardian Rank 6 on multiple accounts. Another thing we learned in our previous video is that you don't have access to buying precious materials like golf balls from Raul until Rank 6 as well. This is a real pain for the challenge, but we proceed. We get to the beams jumping section with the ogres and we take our time clearing it before proceeding to pick up the second orb. The quest in the past could be a bit buggy when dying with the orb, so I took my time to make sure that I didn't accidentally soft lock the quest by dying with the orb. I get to the statue and I deposit the second orb safely. So far so good. Moving on, we quickly grab the third orb and don't have too much trouble getting it to the statue. The next boss offers almost no issues at all. Now it's time for Golgoroth, I mean Morgith, I mean Vorgith. Good lord. Killing the four wizards to grab the buff goes super smoothly. Once we slam the buff, there's one more thing we have to do before we can claim our prize. Once Vorgith's shield lowers, a minotaur spawns that we have to find and kill. Once he's dead, you can pick up the final orb that needs to be slammed on its rightful statue. Finally, a secret ogre spawns this one named Zavoth the Waking. Despite him being the Waking, we put him to sleep quickly and then we give Vorgith a similar fate. After this, all that was left was approaching the statues with the plates. After scanning and in some dialogue, Wish Ender was ours. One down and six to go. Sub 90 minutes regardless of this being a non-RNG exotic honestly felt really good for the challenge. 
Staying in the order of the dungeons, the next most obvious exotic to go for was the reliable for just about any situation Xenophage. Not only did this come out in Shadowkeep after Forsaken, but it also, just like Wishender, was a quest and not RNG. I start off on the moon, headed to the pyramid that we all thought would have some relevance by now, but still has gotten just about as much screen time as Rise of Iron did in the Final Shape reveal pre-show. Rip Siva. Once here, if I scan the four statues in a counterclockwise direction starting closer to the pyramid, I can spawn a chest. Once this is completed, we get to do a step I always loved. To put it simply, take glowy light orb and dunk it on plates that look weirdly similar to the ones in the reprised Crota Lamps encounter in a certain order to progress the quest. I ended up messing up this order a few times before my memory set in. It's right on top, beautiful, and then I think... If I'm right, the last one then should just be- No, there was one in between, ah! Uh... Once this is done, it's on the four lost sectors where we get to do my favorite step where you have to complete a puzzle on the wall, essentially making all the symbols align. When done right, it looks like this. Bottom left. Middle. Middle right. Number two. I really miss having quests like these in the game. Next it was on to the Pit of Heresy dungeon, but before that, I really was expecting to have to do part of the Shadowkeep campaign in order to gain access to it. Because of this, I was already prepared to lose a decent amount of time. Unlike when I got completely screwed when I thought that I could get Divinity really fast, for anybody who watched the raid version of this challenge, you remember I had to do some of the Shadowkeep campaign to unlock the lectern. Similarly, I thought that I needed the campaign to enter Pit of Heresy, but to my surprise, as long as you have teammates with Pit of Heresy access, you can access it. Once again, another time save that I was fully prepared to be a time sink. Once in the dungeon, I scanned the hive plate after the first encounter and slammed the light orb on the two plates by the ogres in order to open the doors to the final quest room. After this, all that was between me and our second exotic in the challenge was Volmar the Tempted, the final quest boss. At the launch of Shadowkeep, she had a really unique fight. Dunk a orb in one of four places depending on the elemental debuff and then only being able to do damage on that particular burn. Now that it's 2023, she goes down really, really easy. And once she was defeated, Xenophage was mine. Two exotics down. The next dungeon on our list was Prophecy. The exotic in this dungeon was- Stop, 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 guys. Don't run to the comment section to point and laugh at me. I was just making sure you guys were paying attention. If you're still watching this video, let me know what exotic you would want to be tied to Prophecy if it was going to have a dungeon exotic. Let me know in the comments below. In all seriousness though, the next thing on our list is the only dungeon exotic that was also a Destiny 1 exotic. Also the best weapon in Destiny history the Galahorn. This is a weapon that needs no introduction, a weapon that kept players from being able to join fire teams in Destiny 1, and a weapon that sparked some of the greatest reactions of all time. Oh my god, Galahorn! Mom, I got Galahorn! Well, this exotic Bungie decided to bring back in the 30th anniversary. The twist was, instead of it being RNG, it would be tied to the new dungeon introduced with the expansion or whatever you want to call the 30th anniversary. It's not called a season, and it's also not called an expansion either. Pack it is. This pack's dungeon, the Grasp of Avarice, is a dungeon that a lot of people also remember for introducing Artifice armor with their very memorable sets. Before we start the quest, I decide to take a trip to good old Zur. Not because I need exotics, I'm still broke. But speaking of being broke, with the axing of Legendary Shards next season, when we're doing these challenges early on, it might become easier to get exotics now that we won't need Legendary Shards. Staying on topic though, I visit Zur by the Star Horse in order to pick up the Galahorn quest. I almost forgot about this prerequisite. With that being said, we dive into the dungeon and are able to beat the first part no problem. Okay, Xenophage, of course, beats me the ass. So, this is so bad, I'm, wow. That's embarrassing. <laughs> After taking out the ogre, it was onto the Sparrow section before finally making it to the part of the dungeon that bleeds the most time during a challenge like this. The section where we play soccer with servitors. After shooting all four soccer balls or servitors into the goals, it was on to the final boss. With no resilience mods, this didn't feel the best, but after a few damage phases, he was dead. Once we killed Captain Avarok, he gave a wolf pack round that we needed to take to Shahan. After talking to him, we were tasked with killing a bunch of powerful Fallen to get even more wolf pack rounds. This step is easy enough, but killing Fallen doesn't guarantee the rounds dropping, so we need to find a place that could guarantee us a bunch of powerful Fallen on the Cosmodrome. I elect to do the Lost Sector on the Divide as it has a decent amount of Yellow Bar Fallen. After I complete it a few times, I get all of the Wolfpack Round Shahan requests. 
After that, it was time to take the Galahorn components to Banshee, who sends us to a lost sector in the Cosmodrome. Which lost sector, you might ask? Well, conveniently, the one we were just at. I fly right back and we blast through the lost sector, ending with killing the giant servitor. Once we open the chest, we get the Galahorn targeting system. All that's left now was bringing everything to Shah Han's hideout to assemble all the parts. Once I stop by the hideout, I run over to Shah Han and he gives me my prize, the Galahorn. Three exotics down out of the six in less than four hours. Technically, we are halfway through the challenge, but I knew that since all of these were quest exotics and the other three were going to be all RNG exotics, that even though we were technically halfway done, there was no way we were halfway done. On the topic of RNG, this transitions as well into the next chapter of this video, my terrible, awful, horrid, abysmal RNG. But before diving into attempts, I decided to learn from my failure in the exotic raid challenge. If you're wondering what that lesson is, I'll fill you in. Well, when I attempted the raid exotic challenge, let's just say without spoiling the challenge that I very much struggled with reasoning with the RNG gods to allow me to get what I desired. Because of this, I decided that when I attempted to do this with the dungeon exotics, that I would make sure to do the triumphs to boost my RNG chances. When hearing this, you might think that I'm crazy for not going for the triumphs when I did the raid exotic challenge, but hear me out. The reason that I didn't go for triumphs during the raid exotic challenge and the all exotic challenge is none other than guardian ranks. Yep, once again, Guardian Rank strikes again, the system that's supposed to be guiding us and helping get us started on our journey. Believe it or not, you can't do Triumphs in Destiny 2 unless you're Guardian Rank 3. And that's not all. You can't even do things like Seasonal Challenges until you're Guardian Rank 3 as well. Guardian Ranks are extremely restrictive, and the last time I deemed that it wasn't worth the time to get multiple accounts to Guardian Rank 3 when every second was crucial. This time though, with 20 hours left in the challenge, I decided that it was at least worth it to give it a shot on our first account. I wasn't sure how much each Triumph would boost our RNG, but I decided that we'd cross that bridge once we got to Rank 3. I started knocking out each Guardian Rank requirement one by one. Really, it just consisted of doing a bunch of busy work on Neptune, the EDC, as well as Nessus. On Neptune, I just needed to do the first story mission as well as meeting Nimbus. I decided to do the mission on Legendary as I know that I may need to do the entirety of the Legendary campaign later to be able to be strong enough to do Ghost of the Deep. After doing the Neptune steps, all that was left was meeting Devrim and Failsafe as well as doing some patrols, lost sectors, and public events. After that, it was back to the tower and we were officially a rank 3 Guardian. Now that Triumphs were unlocked, we could finally dive into the dungeons. I decided that diving in chronologically would make the most sense since I was already kind of unintentionally going in order. This meant that it was time for duality. I opened up my wallet to purchase the Witch Queen dungeon key as this is something that could only be purchased in game so I couldn't pre-buy this before the challenge. There were two challenges that I set my sights on for boosting my RNG now that I was ranked 3. The first one was obvious, collecting every single scannable in the dungeon. The second one was attempting this whole dungeon without dying. I don't know if good old Titan's making it there, guys. Yeah, you can scratch the one without me dying. With no resilience mods, I think it was just gonna be best that we focus on getting all the scannables. We get going and after beating Gull Run, my stream crashes. Dude, I don't know why we're having Twitch problems. It's starting to get annoying. <laughs> that couldn't be a good sign. Just another thing to slow us down. After fixing things, we progress through duality, getting all the scannables as we go. Most aren't too hard to get, but there are definitely a few that are really annoying without mobility or my lion rampants. Excuse me, guys. You gotta be kidding me. Just gotta be kidding me, man. After unlocking the vault, it was on to the final scannable that we need to claim the triumph. It was time to see if taking the time to get this RNG boost would bear fruit. We take down Kaido for the first time, and I hope that we'll be rewarded right away. No luck. Second time, unfortunately, we're met with the same fate. I pray to the RNG gods and I hope that third time's the charm only to be left disappointed. It's all good, cause surely collecting all of the scannables in the Spire of the Watcher dungeon will lead to a better result. We traverse through the dungeon and once again we grab all the scannables along the way. Also, once again, the jumps continue to be the bane of my existence in this dungeon. That one on this character is gonna be a, a fun one. After I get my jumping together, we're finally able to snag the final scannable once again granting the RNG boost. We progress on to the first boss and things are pretty painful without mods. After a few more DPS phases than I'd like to remember, we get past the Harpy. We make our way down the Spire until we finally make it to the Wyvern, who's the only thing between me and my first RNG exotic of the challenge. Surely taking the time to get the RNG booster would reward us for our efforts this time around. 
Sure enough, the fourth exotic dropped and we lived happily ever after. Just kidding, we failed all three times once again. I was starting to think that we had wasted our precious time trying to get to Guardian rank 3 just to not get any exotics. Also, holy cow the wyvern's a sponge compared to some of the other bosses when you don't have the best weapons. Next it was time to do our final remaining dungeon, Ghost of the Deep. Just kidding, it was time for more NEW LIGHT! It's important to note that my guardians were still a pretty good bit below the recommended power for Ghost of the Deep due to its scaling all the way up to 1810. Remember how I said earlier that the removal of legendary shards would actually help with challenges like these? Well the change in final shape that allows for the whole fire team to be the level of the strongest person in the fire team for raids and dungeons will be absolutely huge for this challenge. It'll mean that I no longer have to grind my power level for the most current raid and dungeons. Unfortunately, this isn't final shape, so it's back to new light for us. We have CB Grey Dungeon 2 ready to go, so all that we need to do is burn through it as fast as we can. When I finish getting all three of my characters dungeonable, it's important to mention that we're already 9 hours into the challenge. Over a third of the challenge is already over. New Light campaigns, guardian ranks, and collecting scannables on the first full clear of each dungeon proved to be a real time sink for the challenge. However, nothing could prepare me for what was about to happen. So we were finishing New Light and we were ready to jump back into our duality checkpoint to hopefully get Heart Shadow, right? Wrong, 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 wrong! The next part of this challenge is called, The World Is Out To Get Me. The beginning of this story starts out normal. I have my wallet out and I'm ready to purchase the 2000 silver required to purchase a dungeon key. Then something very unexpected happens. But before I can get into that, let me paint you a quick picture. Now imagine. You're the Steam store, and you have a person with the same email who's made six brand new accounts in the last 12 hours, and the accounts are trying to make a bunch of identical purchases of the exact same DLCs and expansions on each account. What conclusion would you draw? Would you be suspicious? Does this look like the actions of a banavator? Or maybe a cheater? Or is this what a normal user that's just trying to do a dungeon exotic challenge that needs multiple accounts? Well. If you chose the last option, you'd probably be right in one out of the other 99 instances where it usually was a ban evader or a cheater. Because of this, I was completely locked out of the Steam store from making purchases. I couldn't use Steam gift cards, I couldn't make any Steam purchases, I couldn't get anything to work for almost two hours. And then, right when I was about to give up on the challenge, the most unlikely hero came in and saved the day. Game stop. Believe it or not, GameStop Digital Codes is what saved the challenge. For whatever reason, it actually worked. We were now approaching the 11 hour mark of the challenge. I was extremely discouraged and my confidence in being able to complete this challenge had just about died. Despite still having a little over 13 hours left in the challenge, I was really down in the dumps. I was honestly ready to quit and I really have y'all to thank that we're watching at twitch.tv slash cbgray for keeping me going. A lot of you were suggesting that I should add 2 hours to the clock to make up for the lost time, but I just couldn't bring myself to do that. Once the timer had started, there was no stopping it until the clock struck 24 hours. With no time to feel sorry for myself, I dive into duality on my first character and try to bait Kaido as fast as possible knowing that there's no time to waste. Keep in mind, this account isn't Guardian Rank 3, which means that I have no triumphs, which means I have zero RNG boosters and most likely, zero hope. Keitel goes down super fast and I pray to the RNG gods that we see a gold square pop up on the screen that could instantly boost my morale. Unfortunately, it doesn't drop. No matter, I jump on my second character as fast as I can and I dive right back into the encounter. We down Keitel again and once she goes down, well, just watch. Please, please, make up for some time, please. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I couldn't believe it. I was just about ready to quit, and then that happened. Just like that, we hit four out of the six exotics. Feeling completely rejuvenated, we dive into Spire of the Watcher with a newfound sense of confidence. As we are going through the boss fight, it'd appear it like I had used up all of my good luck. The game is fair and the game is fun. That's what we say in Mario 64. After deeming the game very fair and very fun, we take down the Wyvern during the next DPS phase. Now before we get into what happened, have you guys ever seen this photo before? Well this picture perfectly embodies the story of this part of the challenge. After almost quitting due to being literally locked out from steam, we don't quit and we snag the heart shadow. And then after downing the wyvern for the first time on this account, this happened. Two in a row. <laughs> I say about the game. 
said, the game is fair and the game is fun. Everybody say it with me. Just like that, with more than half of the time still remaining in the challenge, we had five out of the six exotics and only one more left to finish the challenge. Before we move on, we have to recap. We got Wishender, Xenophage, and Galahorn respectively in one try due to them being quest exotics. Then we got Duality in five tries or on our second attempt for the second account. And then we got Hierarchy of Needs in four tries or on our first attempt on the second account. To make matters even crazier, my second account didn't have RNG boost because they weren't Guardian Rank 3. And to make it even crazier than crazy, we were just about to give up. Maybe the craziest turnaround in the history of all of our challenges. One more thing I wanted to note is that I decided to do this challenge on a week where the featured dungeon wasn't an RNG exotic dungeon week. I wanted to make this challenge even harder because I was cocky that I wasn't going to need the rotating dungeon to get these exotics. However, I can't lie, after having the Steam Lockout debacle, I really thought that this was going to come back to bite me. And just like that, I could taste the finish line for this challenge. All that was between me and a good night's rest was the Navigator, which happens to be the only exotic I still don't have even on my main account. I've never seen this weapon drop, so it was personal. I know that I'm not strong enough to do Ghost of the Deep yet, but I let everyone convince me to try just once because we got two exotics back to back. Very reluctantly, I agree and we dive into the dungeon. At not even the soft cap, you'd think that I'd be completely useless in this dungeon, but funny enough, I was actually able to still contribute thanks to the tractor cannon being completely broken. Despite hitting immune, I could still blind and debuff enemies with my tractor cannon and I got a pretty good auto-loading blinding grenade launcher from Spire of the Watcher as well. I can kill things! <laughs> we progressed through the dungeon decently smooth, collecting all the scannables once again on the way. I jumped back onto my first account since it was Guardian rank 3 and a higher power level. We eventually get to the boss and it's time to see if we can get 3 in a row to finish off this challenge. Well, something did get finished, but it wasn't the challenge. At my power level, we got completely annihilated. No matter, I wasn't really tripping because I knew we still had 11 hours left in the challenge. Plenty of time to get to the power level cap. I started doing the legendary campaign from Lightfall to quickly progress up to the soft cap. I knew that once I got around 1750, I would be able to do damage to the enemies. Also, we kept getting soft locked over and over and over and over. Bugged? Come on. A little before the 15 hour mark, I wasn't quite at the soft cap, but I was at around 1730 and able to do damage to the enemies, so that was just gonna have to do. This was gonna be a contest dungeon run. We decided to jump back in and instead of going to the boss checkpoint, we started back at the beginning. Why you might ask? For another RNG boost. For those that don't know, doing the navigator catalyst for someone can actually provide you with another RNG boost when doing your boss completion. The only caveat was it required a fresh run. No worries, it would be worth it if we ended up getting the navigator for our efforts. Funny enough, this was my first time doing this since I don't have navigator on my main account. I found myself really enjoying spawning the secret boss each time to progress the quest. After the final time spawning the Catalyst boss Tholar, the Acolyte of Nocris, and defeating him, we were able to complete the Catalyst quest. After this, all that was left was to defeat Samuma and claim our final exotic now that we had two RNG boosts. She goes down the first time and we're given absolutely nothing. No matter, we still have two more attempts, right? Yeah, those two results were fails too. Let's recap real quick. Every dungeon attempt that had an active RNG boost, we have failed miserably. And the only two dungeon exotics tied to RNG that we have obtained were without RNG boosters active. I'm starting to question if we were wasting our time with these RNG boosters when we haven't really gotten anything for our efforts. We had now crossed the 18 hour mark and we were still needing the final exotic. We were officially in major trouble. It may feel like having 6 hours is still a ton of time for the challenge, but this really isn't the case. We need it to once again power level on our second account, and as you saw with the first account, it took hours to even get to roughly 1730. By almost the 22 hour mark, we are ready to attempt what could be our final 3 attempts of the challenge. And when I say ready, we really weren't ready, I just was out of time and we had to get going as these boss fights really drag at a low light. I had no choice, we were going to have to do these attempts while getting completely obliterated. We tried the first attempt at the boss and we unfortunately fail miserably. My second character is still pretty weak so I decide to do a couple more lightfall missions to try to boost him up as much as I can. I just think that not being able to damage the enemies in the dungeon is pretty cheesy. When I finish the mission we only have a little more than an hour and a half remaining. We dive into the boss fight and we hit a massive wall. We wipe a few times and after some of the worst luck ever, we beat the boss with a little less than 30 minutes remaining. With almost no time left, here's what happened. Yes. 
please, 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 for the storybook ending. The story never wants to work with us. All right. Double glaives. I bet the chances of this happening was slimmer than me actually getting the exotic. No matter, no time to sulk or feel sorry for myself with only 27 minutes to do our final run before the timer hit 24 hours. I dive right into my third character and we get going immediately. We have two pretty decent damage phases and she's down to less than a fourth of her health. Despite the good damage, we are now down to our final 10 minutes of the challenge. This was going to come down to the absolute wire. With all three symbols banked, it was time to see if the story was going to end in glory or absolute heartbreak. I'm going in. I don't know if I hit her. I'm going to double check in a second. I did not. But that did. She's dead. Come on. There we go. Please. Please. That's only one. Is it drop alone or is it drop with another thing? What else is there? No. 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 <laughs> No, a chess piece. No, double chess piece. No. <laughs> double glaives. And then double chess piece. This unfortunately was the end of the challenge, and all I could do was watch the final seconds tick off the clock. Despite the heartbreak, we did learn a lot. One, doing Guardian Rank 3 to unlock triumphs might not be as valuable as we originally thought. Two, creating accounts all on one email is an awful idea. Three, Power leveling is a huge time sink in the challenge for the most recent activities, so we need to do a better job at leveling efficiently. And four, too many unexpected things can go wrong, so even though I lucked out getting Heart Shadow and Hierarchy of Needs early, I should have done this in between two resets so that I could take advantage of two farmable dungeons. Even though we failed, I know this challenge is possible. But what this challenge let me know was that an even greater challenge might be possible. What if I told you that maybe a god run was possible, where I could get every single dungeon exotic, in 24 hours on one account. What if I was able to get the navigator within 12 hours of grinding? And let's say I started the challenge 18 hours before the weekly reset. What if prior to the weekly reset, duality was the farmable dungeon? With our remaining six hours, we farm to get heart shadow since it's a super fast farm with Keitel. We then quickly snag the Wish Ender, Xenophage, and Gallahorn, respectively. Then, with our remaining six hours, we pick up the hierarchy of needs and we would have every single dungeon exotic on one account in 24 hours. I believe this god run is possible, but what do you think? I hope to see you there at twitch.tv slash cbgray. Thanks for watching.